Welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore, and we're continuing our series of interviews with Eve Engler. Eve, as I said, is a Canadian commentator and author, and his recent book, The Ugly Canadian, is all about Stephen Harper's foreign policy. Thanks for joining us again, Eve. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about Latin America. Has uh, Stephen Harper's policies towards Latin America changed in any way from previous Canadian policy? It's a heightening of the uh, sort of hostility towards the, the leftward shift in, in Latin America. A uh, number of criticisms of the uh, Venezuelan government and going out of its way to, uh, to criticize Venezuelan government and uh, Peter Kent, uh, the minister for Latin America for a couple of years, he you know, went down to Venezuela uh, back in January of 2010 and only met with opposition figures and, and made a number of uh, critical comments about uh, the lack of democracy in, in Latin America. Uh, they've uh, responded to uh, the coup against uh, Fernando Lugo back in June uh, uh, this year. Uh, they were the only, Canada was the only country to recognize uh, the new government in uh, in um, in uh, Paraguay that uh, had overthrown Lugo, which, who had ended 61 years of one-party rule. Uh, the, the Canadian government was um, uh, tacitly supported the coup in, in Honduras against Manuel Zelaya in June of 2009. Uh, Canada was the only country to not, uh, only major donor to Honduras to not uh, cut off some of its aid after the after the coup. The European Union, the World Bank, even Washington suspended some of its aid. Uh, Ottawa refused to, su to suspend its aid to Honduras after the coup, uh, maintained the military training assistance program whereby uh, uh, Honduran, a handful of Honduran troops are trained by the Canadian military in Canada. Uh, so, so many different public comments uh, in support uh, of um, of the the new post government uh, coup in uh, post coup government in in, uh, in Honduras. Uh, so, so they've taken a very uh, very right wing position on on Latin America. Uh, close to uh, uh, obviously the Canadian mining companies that are huge players uh, throughout uh, throughout the hemisphere. I was kind of taken by an experience I had in Venezuela. I was visiting and uh, doing some reports and interviews and some other things. I was uh, went to visit the Canadian embassy just to sort of pay my respects and see what they had to say about the situation. And, and without even telling me they were doing this, they set up a meeting for me with seven or eight opposition members. And it was a briefing ses session on the situation in Venezuela. And it was essentially one horror story after another about the Chavez government and what was going on in Venezuela. And it seemed extraordinarily activist for me that the embassy would do that. It's kind of interesting. They did it without even hiding the fact they were doing it. They were quite unabashedly promoting the opposition. I mean, is this a reflection of, of, of Canadian embassies and foreign policy throughout Latin America? Yeah, I think it would be a reflection uh, when there when there's a, a government in power that is not seen as serving the interests of um, of uh, foreign investors or uh, or you know Washington led geopolitics, which is the case with Chavez. Uh, the Canadian government's uh, hostile. In the case of Chavez, there's been a number of reports. Uh, it's it's hard to get. Uh, you know, confirmation of all the details, but a, a few different investigative reports have shown that uh, Canada, the Canadian aid agency and the Canadian embassy in Venezuela have been uh, fairly significantly involved in, in funding opposition groups, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, uh, going to different Venezuelan opposition groups. And uh, Canada is after uh, the U.S., obviously the U.S. is spending uh, different reports into the millions, tens of millions of dollars a year in terms of funding uh, opposition groups in, in Venezuela. It's kind of ironic, actually, because I've never heard reports, I may be wrong, but I've never heard of reports of Canada funding opposition groups in Cuba where there's such significant uh, commercial interests of Canada, they don't want to piss off the Cuban government. But in Venezuela, which they accuse Venezuela of being a sort of dictatorship the way Cuba is, they're unabashedly uh, supporting the opposition. There's a long-standing um, um, you know, sort of the policy of the Canadian government towards Venezuela. There, is, there are towards Cuba. There, there is ha there have been some reports, uh, much less so than in the case of, of Venezuela, of of some Canadian uh, Canadian funding to to you know pro democracy movements in um, in Cuba, um, but no, much less in the case of, of Venezuela. And in the, the Harper government and the Canadian government, you know, before that the. Uh, the Paul Martin government and, and, and Chrétien, but the Harbour government particularly, has is very clearly hostile to, to Chavez and is clearly hostile to the leftward shift in Latin America and has uh, 
has brought enhanced aid uh, to the more right wing governments. Uh, the 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 the, um, the uh, free trade agreement they signed with Colombia, with uh, uh, the Uribe government in Colombia, that was explicitly that, that you know the minister said explicitly was designed to support Colombia in competition with with Venezuela uh, uh, in the region. So they you know spending bringing spending aid in Peru and, and Colombia, making those countries big recipients of Canadian aid, was explicitly designed to support the more uh, the more right wing sectors uh, in those countries uh, that were you know sort of feeling under under threat from the leftward socialistic um, uh, shift in the hemisphere. Uh, so the so the the Harper government is 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 right Right there is not as big a big a player in this process as, as Washington, but is right there with uh, with Washington in terms of supporting those sort of uh, oppositional uh, the you know the opposition forces to the uh, leftward shift. And of course, America. Canada has an enormous amount of stake in Latin America because of its uh, dominant role in global mining, and Latin America being one of the major places for uh, extractive industries. So how much does this impact what Canada wants in terms of its foreign policy? And, and, and do we see any differences in Harper in that respect? I think it has, a, it has a big role. I mean, one of the first things that governments and social movements that challenge neoliberal capitalism tend to do is uh, call for higher royalty, royalty rates on natural resources, call for uh, nationalizing of natural resources. So the the Harper government, I think, is is and a Canadian business because it's by far the biggest player in 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 Latin American uh, natural resources in terms of mining and stuff. Uh, they are particularly weary of of uh, of uh, movements and governments that challenge neoliberal capitalism because they their assets, their profits are are tend to be um, uh, some of the first that get to, that get to, that get impinged upon. And uh, so I think that's a that's an essential role and Canadian mining companies dominate uh, I think in er, the biggest player I think in every single country in the hemisphere um, uh, so there is significant significant corporate interests that uh, that uh, drive this policy now has Harper changed anything about Canada's policy towards Cuba you would think if there was if he was going to be quote ideologically consistent in some way uh, that they would be uh, all over supporting the Cuban opposition as I said you say there's been some, I, I take your point, but not much. Uh, in fact, the, the Harper seems to not have changed the traditional, relatively friendly attitude towards Cuba. Yes, that's that's one that's a you know from an ideological perspective, you would definitely assume a more critical position of of, uh, of uh, the Cuban government, and they haven't. Uh, they've actually been quite. Um, it seems very careful to basically continue status quo policy, which is. Uh, say very little about what's going on in Cuba, uh, while at the same time, obviously, Canadian uh, companies are pretty, pretty significant players in Cuba. Uh, and uh, and uh, the Conservative government really hasn't uh, gone out of its way to, uh, to uh, you know, criticize human rights violations or lack of democracy or anything like that in Cuba, which is, which is surprising. I think it's partly reflective of the business interests in Cuba. It's also partly reflective of the fact that, you know, a million, I think it's almost a million Canadians that uh, travel to Cuba every year. So there's lots of uh, sort of a warm feeling among Canadians towards Cuba. And there's a sense that, uh, that Washington really has been a bully down there and, and uh, that, that uh, Canada taking a different position is, is, uh, is something that lots of Canadians are sort of proud of, uh, so they've been very careful on the Cuba file, which is which is I think a, is a is a, a interesting kind of uh, development in there because they've generally been pretty hostile on, are taking pretty sort of pro uh, uh, pro empire policies kind of uh, almost everywhere else in the world. All right, thanks very much for joining us, Steve. We'll be continuing this discussion about other areas of Canadian foreign policy. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Thanks for having me, and thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.